everyone and welcome back to neuropsychology. So in the last video we talked about the five categories of visual processing. So we talked about vision for action, so how we see something and for how we need to see something f to make a directed uh, movement. Uh, action for vision, how we scan with our eyes, so how we use our eye scanning to identify objects. Visual recognition, the recognition of objects visual space um, to understand the relation between objects, but also to understand the relation between these objects and yourself, and visual attention. So um, our brain cannot be attentive to every single stimuli that comes in. Um, it has to only give attention to wherever it wants to attend to. So in this video, we are going to talk about the disorders of the visual pathways. So we're mainly going to talk about um, these. So in the picture above, you can see all these different little lesions and then what that would do to your visual field. So this is your right eye, this is your left eye, um, this is your left visual field, this is your right visual field. So how these different lesions affect your visual field. And we're also going to talk about scotomas at the end. And then we're done. Okay, so before we can consider deficits associated with damage to the visual pathways, we must revisit something we talked about earlier in a previous video. So there are two key elements in the way our brain organizes the visual fields. So the first thing is, um, that the left half of each retina sends its projections to the right side of the brain and the right half of each retina sends its projections to the left side of the brain. So the representation of each side of the visual world uh, seen by each eye is sent to the same place in the V1 cortex. Therefore, damage of V1 will affect both eyes. However, if you have a visual disturbance that is restricted to one eye, it has to be from outside of the brain. So there has to be a lesion that is outside of the brain. So it has to be before information crosses over an optic chiasm, so either in the optic nerve or in the retina. So here you have your eyes, those are under your brain. So this is a ventral picture of your brain, and then the eyes are under your brain. Um, so if you have, for example, a lesion here in the optic nerve or in the retina, then it can affect one eye. Whereas after the optic chiasm, if you have a lesion here, it affects both eyes because this is connected to both eyes. So definitely remember that. Um, and then also, Different parts of the visual field are topographically uh, represented in different parts of area V1. So an injury to a specific region of V1 produces loss of vision in a very specific part of your visual world. So we'll talk about that in more detail. Okay. So let's talk about what happens when damage is done to different places in the visual pathways. So as number one in the image, which you can see right here, this is standard vision. Um, this is kind of used as reference. So this is someone who does not have any lesions. Um, and then in the image above, right here of this brain, you will see all these different numbers, um, which could be lesions. So number two will be a lesion of the um, optic nerve. Uh, three and four will be very specific lesions of the chiasm. Five will be a lesion of the optic tract, etc. And here is of the cortex. So we'll go through those and how it would affect your visual field. So the one we're going to talk about is monocular blindness, bitemporal hemianopia, nasal hemianopia, homonymous hemianopia, quadrantinopia, or they also call this hemianopia, but I... I like to call it quadrantinopia and macular sparing. And then later on, we're going to talk about scotomas too. Okay, so let's start off with the first one, which is monocular blindness. So technically, the name says it all. 
So in the picture, that would be this one, number two. So that is if you have a lesion of um, your optic nerve. So whenever you have a lesion of one optic nerve, you will have loss of sight in one eye. So here's your visual field. And then in black, you will see um, wherever you'll be blind. So if you cut this, um, your right eye will not see anything in the visual field. Um, so if you cut, for example, the other side, it would be the other eye. So next up is bitemporal hemianopia. And this is due to a lesion of the optic chiasm. So you can see that right here. So if, it, if the optic chiasm is cut right here, um, you will get bitemporal hemianopia. So this will result in loss of vision of your lateral areas, as you can see right here. So all the things to the like outside and to the far right and far left, you will be blind to that. So that this deficit can arise, for example, um, when you have a tumor that develops in the pituitary gland. So the pituitary gland is medially and it's very close to the optic chiasm. So if this tumor is there and it grows, it can put pressure on the medial part of the chiasm and it can result into this loss of lateral vision. So it can give you bitemporal hemianopia. So next one up is number four, is nasal hemianopia. So this can be either right or left. Um, in this example, to the right, you see right nasal hemianopia. And this is when you lose vision of your nasal field. So this can result from a lesion to the lateral optic chiasm. And as you can see right here, if you have a lesion right on this side, you will get nasal hemianopia right here. But if you have the lesion on this side, you will get this part will fall out. So um, if you have this lesion on the like right, you will get it right there. If you have a lesion on this side, you will get na uh, nasal hemianopia on the other side. Okay, so next up is homonymous hemianopia. So here you will lose vision of one entire visual field. So it can be either your left um, visual field or your right visual field. In this example, it is the left visual field. And this happens when you cut the optic tract. So we briefly talked about this um, when we talked about the eye and the, the beginning of the visual system. This actually can also hap happen when you cut the LGN, um, the lateral geniculonucleus nucleus of the thalamus. And sometimes this can even happen if you lesion a part of V1. But for now, I just want you to memorize that um, if you cut the optic tract, so right here, that will result in loss of one entire um, visual field. And then last but not least, we have um, quadrantinopia. Um, it's technically similar as hemianopia, but it's just a quadrant. So here you will lose vision of a quadrant or a quadrant of your fovea. So this often results from a smaller lesion to the occipital lobe. Okay, and the last one is macular sparing. So macular sparing of the central visual field, so you can see that right here, so there's sparing right here and right here. Um, so macular sparing of the central visual field helps to differentiate lesions of the optic tract or thalamus from cortical lesions because macular sparing occurs only after large unilateral lesions of the visual cortex. Macular sparing, aka the sparing of this little central um, circle in the middle, it does not always happen. So most often uh, people that have visual cortex lesions will have complete loss of vision in one quadrant, so quadrantinopia, or they will lose vision in one half of their visual field, so hemianopia. Okay, so we talked a lot about lesions of the occipital lobe, so lesions of the cortex. So um, we talked about lesions of the 
optic tract, optic nerve, the chiasm um, prior to this video already, but we haven't really gone deeper into lesions of the occipital lobe. So often the severity of the deficit of the occipital um, lobe depends on the size of the lesion. So it depends how much you will be able to see. People with occipital lobe lesions can have hemianopia, where they lose vision of one entire visual field, as you can see right here in A, and this is often due to a larger lesion. So here you see the calcarine fissure, and here you see a large lesion all around the calcarine fissure. Uh, people can also develop quadrantinopia, where they lose a quarter-ish of their visual field, uh, which you can see in B. So here is the top right quarter. And this is um, due to a smaller lesion, but in the same area. So smaller lesion, so you will have less, um, the blind spot will be less big, so it'll be smaller. And as you can see, as it's below the calcium fissure, you will lose um, sight in your top visual field. And it's of the opposite side of the brain. So this is on the left side, le left hemisphere. So you will lose it in the um, right visual field. And sometimes when people have a very small occipital lobe lesion, it could produce a tiny like little circle or a small blind spot in your visual field, which you can see right here. And this is called a scotoma. However, what's very interesting is that people are often unaware that they have iscotoma because our eyes constantly have these tiny involuntary movements, which we call nystagmus. And because we have these movements, we kind of just fill in this blind spot. So because our eyes are always moving, iscotoma is sometimes not perceived and the brain will kind of fill in the blanks and then you will still see your whole visual field due to these movements. Okay, and that was the end of this chapter, and I will see you guys back soon for the next chapter.